everybody, and welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. This is Katie Weaver, and I'm here with my co-host, partner in crime, and sister, Christy Brower. Hello. Hello. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Well, I hope it's Tuesday. It's yeah. our Tuesday group case. Hope you guys are doing well. There's a really weird up and down energy going on this week. So if you've been high and low and mad and sad and happy all in the same breath, you're mm -hmm. not alone. <laughs> it's going to be dis demonstrated tomorrow in Idaho by getting snow after three days of at least 60 degree weather. So yeah, welcome yeah. to our lives. <laughs> and we, of course, do have a softball game. So that's that should how be that goes. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is, it's how it rolls for it sure. Is. <laughs> that up and down energy i'm like boy that is we're seeing it in the weather that is for we sure we are yeah we sure are so that's definitely how it is well i am super excited for our case today oh my gosh i stumbled <laughs> upon this case a few, couple of weeks ago when i was studying a different idaho serial killer and discovered that we have an idaho serial killer that i'd never heard of no so, and man he's a humdinger he's a too doozy and a half wow. yeah and how did we not know about this mofro? Well, he committed all of his crimes when we were either not born yet or mm -hmm. little kids. Little kids. He's, yeah. So his name is Thomas Creech. Thomas Eugene Creech, to be exact. Mm -hmm. One of his claims to fame is he has been on death row not once, but twice. Yeah. Now, how the hell does somebody get on death row twice? He's currently still alive, even though he has been in prison for 40 years almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll Crazy. let you know how. Yes, we Creech will. is still on this planet of Earth. But uh, I'll let you decide if you think he still belongs here, but you will tell you the story. Mm -hmm. So Creech started crime really young. He had a tough life as a kid. And when he was 16, his father died in his arms. Yeah. And his first attempted murder was when that happened. He attacked and tried to kill the male nurse that failed to help his father before he died. Or that he inferred, you know, right. failed to help his he father. He assumed or yeah. that was his impression. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first thing uh, he did at 16. And again, he uh, experienced the trauma of his father dying in his arms. Yeah. Now, he told the Journal News out of Hamilton, Ohio, that by the time he was 17, he claimed that there's a lot of claims and not all of them are backed up. But mm -hmm. he's made a lot of claims. He claims he's killed 40 people. Yeah. We're not sure. They're, they're, mm -hmm. That's not all been proven. But, you know, a lot of serial yeah. killers make a lot of claims that aren't fully proven. But Right. He says at 17, he drowned a friend in New Miami uh, who he believed was responsible for uh, killing his girlfriend in a car accident. Yeah. He also claimed that in Ohio, he killed five people from a motorcycle gang that he believed were invo involved in satanic cult worship rituals. Now, this yeah. one's weird because then he kind of joined the satanic cult mm -hmm. bikers. Yeah. I'm not so, so sure about that one. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to say, too, we've heard this lots of times in young people who are pissed mm -hmm. at the world and want to upset and shock everybody. It's not uncommon for them to start throwing around Satan and Satanism and shit they right. know really nothing at all about because what they think they're doing and what those actual things are are totally different. Yeah, but, they are. Yeah. So that doesn't surprise me at all, you know? Plus, but, I'm looking at this guy going, you killed five bikers right. by yourself? At like live? 17 years old? Sure. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not so sure about that one. Yeah. So at that point, he ran away from home and went to San Francisco. And he claims that in 1965, he killed a man in San Fran. And that then he also claims... That from the time of, from 1965 to 1969, he became involved with the Church of Satan. I mean, he was against, against it. Now he's for it. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to know. He, yeah, it's hard to say. In 1973, 
he married, get this, Thomasina. <laughs> so apparently Thomas wasn't enough. They had to have, you know, mm -hmm. Thomas and Thomasina Cena wed. That year, they were wanted in connection to the murder of Paul Schrader in Tucson, Arizona. So Paul was stabbed to death on January 4th, 1974 yeah. in the downtown motor hotel uh, in Tucson. So Creech was actually arrested for it in Beaver, Utah and taken back to Arizona to face charges. After many, many hours of deliberation, at this point, he's 23 years old. He's acquitted of that murder. This dude is maybe the luckiest criminal we've ever seen. The squirreliest. I don't know. We've right? had a few, but yeah, Sad. this one like Sad, already. Though, he didn't get uh, convicted there. That would have ended this bullshit. Right. Right. It would have happened. Yeah. So then he and Miss Thomasina move to Portland so that they can uh, give Portland hell for a while. Yeah, they were a real Bonnie and Clyde situation. Mm hmm. So at some point while they're there, he ends up in the Oregon Psych Psychiatric Hospital for a certain amount of time. And after he gets released, he moves to into the St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Portland mm -hmm. and starts working as their maintenance worker. What could go wrong? He's working in a church. Right. You just have, you know, a serious killer working um, in a church. Religious beliefs have got me very, very puzzled. <laughs> Throughout his life. That's true. Yeah. He's super confused. Who hires this person? Yeah. I mean, he must be pretty charismatic. You know, mm -hmm. he really must be to be able to keep uh, all of this, these lines going. Right. So he had sent a letter to Idaho News 6, who ran a big story on him several years ago. And in that letter, he told them that while in Portland, his wife, Thomasina, was raped by 11 men and tossed out of a four-story high window that left her paralyzed and damaged mentally. She ended up in the Oregon State Hospital and killed herself there. Again, every so many of his stories are pretty grandiose. I'm not saying I mean, his wife didn't get raped and attacked. She probably did. She also was sad, with him, right? you know. Well, I think yeah. that he has... So we've talked a little bit about confabulation before here yeah. on the show. And I and and I feel like a lot of his stories have confabulation, which means that yeah. there's probably a foundation of truth mm -hmm. and then reality gets skewed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and a lot of his stories, you know, maybe he killed one biker or he got in a fight with a biker, you know. Yeah. Maybe she yeah. was raped by a guy. I, she probably didn't survive if she fell four stories. Right. You know, maybe she fell yeah. two stories, but you know, the story just mm -hmm. gets kind of bigger and bigger. Or maybe yeah, she that, fell that's down the confabulation. Stairs. Yeah. Yeah. And but very common rate, in, in mentally ill folks. And you know, we know that he, you know, spent some time in the state hospital in Oregon. So yes. He's got I some will issues. Say we searched and searched for her to get a better background on her and could find absolutely nothing. 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 We have her full name, but we couldn't find a thing. And that's it. But it does sound like her life came to a very violent and sad end. So oh, that's really gosh. sad. Yeah. So in 1974, he's convicted of killing a 22-year-old named William Joseph Dean. So Dean's body was found in his living quarters inside St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Portland. Right. You hire a Satanist, this is what you get. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But really, like, holy cow. Yeah. Uh. This guy is just okay. a tornado of disaster. Right. And they've got a, the darkest being living in their church. Yeah. So later that same year, two traveling painters are found shot to death in Idaho. So at this point, this I'm very confused about this because I'm not sure exactly how he, you know, is convicted of killing, but he's still out killing. There's a part right. of the story that makes no sense to me, but this is the best timeline we can find. Yeah, I couldn't figure out why he wasn't still in prison in Oregon. Right. But he's, you know, and maybe they were just on the lam. The, the, everything I have read does not explain that. And believe right. me, I have read and read. But yeah, anyway. There, there's not enough information definitely about him. No. But two traveling painters are found shot to death in Idaho. So Thomas Screech and his new girlfriend, he moved on from Thomasina, you know, the, the grieving widow, widower has moved on. To Carol Spaulding. Poor and Carol. they were hitchhiking 
from Lewiston to Donnelly, Idaho. So two men by the names of Edward Arnold and John Bradford picked them up in their Buick and Thomas shot and partially buried them off Highway 55 in Donnelly. You so, know, he just sort of randomly kills people too. Like there's no, mm -hmm. when you look at all the people that he's murdered, there's no like pattern of anything. Like this yeah. is just, you know, straight up psychotic probably. Yeah. Yeah. So the judge in the case, they're, they are arrested. He's arrested in Idaho and charged. So the judge in the case, uh, later on in an interview, he says that in this, his name is Ray Durchy. Mm -hmm. And Ray Durchy says that, uh, and that Durchy, by the way, is a very Idaho name. Uh, yes, it is. Me up. I've but never he, heard, I've never heard of that name anywhere outside right? of Idaho. I, I'm sure it's uh, ethnic, you know, it belongs to some <laughs> culture that's not ours, I'm sure. But Durchy is, yeah, we've, we've heard that name. We've known lots of Durchies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But at any rate, so Creech says he didn't do it. But instead admits to being a mass murderer. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> this dude, come guts. on. Yeah. So he starts spilling his guts about a whole bunch of other crimes that he's committed, but says he didn't do this. Yeah. And they did find some of the bodies that he identified and told them where they were. Yeah. Not so, nine, right? They yeah. They found nine bodies. They found nine bodies. Yes. He basically, so this is what Judge Durchy said. And this I would like to get a hold of. So Judge Durchy did a video, an audio recording about Creech's case uh, for the Idaho Historical Society before yeah. this passing. I don't have a clue how to get a hold of that, but I would love to. No, but let's We're not done with the Creech case because there's a few answers or questions we still want to answer. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to try to get that. But Durchy says it was verified that they did find some of the bodies that he identified before them and showed them where they were. That was his defense in my case. He says, my goodness, I'm admitting I killed all of these other people. I wouldn't deny it if I had done this. <laughs> So oh, that's his defense. <laughs> I didn't do all these. I didn't do these murders because I was doing all these other murders. Other murders. <laughs> so you can't really find me a couple of books because I, yeah, yeah, that was, that was basically what he had to say for himself. Uh, a statement from the Idaho Supreme Court noted Creech has admitted to killing or, or participating in the killing of at least 26 people. Yeah. The bodies of 11 of his victims who were shot, stabbed, beaten, or strangled to death have been recovered in seven states. Okay, so 11 mm, victims. 11, okay. That they did find. All right. For, and former Ada County Prosecutor Jim Harris said, they found a large number of skeletons that Tom led them to in a mine shaft in California. Yeah. Yeah. So he's been up to all kinds of bullshit in his yeah. life. And he's only at this point in his mid-20s. Right, yeah, he's young. I mean, he's spent the yeah. majority of his life in prison. Yeah. Yes. So there is a lot of uh, worry during the trial. This is in 1975. A lot of worry from law enforcement about security. So there's rumors that there is a number of Hells Angels that are going to come and try to break him out. That didn't actually happen. And maybe he's the one that started that rumor. I was going to say, I bet he started the rumor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet he did too. Because now so, he's a hell's angel. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're oh, Satanists. Sure so he was. That was a, that would be a rival biker gang. I don't know. <laughs> right? He, isn't he? Yeah. He does. He belongs to the uh, biker gang of Satan. Right. Something. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> God, I don't know. I don't know. So Judge Durchy finds him guilty of the Donnelly murders and sentences him to hang in 1976. Yeah, because back then that's how we did it in Idaho. Well, in Ooh. Idaho, back then, a first-degree murder charge came with it a mandatory death sentence. Yeah, mandatory. If you were convicted of, of a first-degree murder, you were dying. That and it was by it was. hanging. You yes. think we live in the wild, wild west? We do. Mm -hmm. No, just kidding. I was born in 1975, so it was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so he's sentenced to hang. Well, later... Sometime between 1977 and 1979, that law is ruled unconstitutional by the Idaho Supreme Court. And Creech is now sentenced to life in prison because they have basically put a stay 
on execution. Yeah. So now so here we have acquitted of murder, somehow yeah. convicted of murder, but still on the run. Now yeah. convicted of murder, given a life sentence or given the death penalty, death sentence, death penalty commuted. This dude is the luckiest serial killer on the planet because it's yeah. not even done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he, now he's just in prison forever is the, the new plan. Yeah. The sheriff at the time, Sheriff Palmer and the prosecutor, uh, Jim Harris, are both just sick about it because mm -hmm. how, you know, and in fact, um, Roger Bourne had made the statement, if the death penalty doesn't fit this defendant, who does it fit? Yeah. This defendant is a mass murderer. He has shown extreme violence in the penitentiary. If the legislature didn't intend it to fit this defendant, who could it fit any better? Right. And indeed. So also Sheriff Palmer and Prosecutor Harris had both written letters to the prison uh, expressing their extreme concern about the health and safety of other inmates because they were absolutely certain that he would kill again, given any opportunity. Yeah. So the prison obviously uh, took their advice, uh, you know, right to, to heart. And he's sure only did. in prison for a few years and they give him a job. Yeah. Because a violent, dangerous serial killer should definitely be given privileges in prison, don't you yeah. know? So he gives is given a job as a janitor. Yeah. And as a janitor, he has privileges other people don't have. He's one of the only inmates in the whole prison that has permission to be out of his cell at various times and around other inmates. Why? So this is where this case just makes me so damn mad. And I promise right. there's going to be some follow up on this. Right. So there is a boy in jail. He's a he's a man. I'm calling him a boy because he was just a boy. Yeah. He was 23 years old. His name was David Dale Jensen. David Dale Jensen was in prison for stealing a car. Yeah. David Dale Jensen had tried to kill himself as a teenager, uh, had tried to shoot himself and didn't succeed and had a fair amount of brain damage and a plastic plate in his head as uh, to was a makeshift skull because yeah. of the damage that was done to his brain. Yeah. Why, 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 why was this kid in prison amongst right. these kinds of violent inmates? But yeah, around freaking Creech. Crazy. We were able to run down his, uh, some of his family information. He actually is from Pocatello. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep working on which isn't, far Jensen, from us. which isn't far from us. Yeah. He's buried in Pocatello. We're going to really try to get a hold of his real story because mm -hmm. this is there is a tragedy here and a story that deserves to be told. Yeah. So we're going to work on that angle of this story, too. We'll see what we can come up with. So there's a few different ways this story goes, because surprise, surprise, uh, Thomas, you know, talks in circles and tells different layers of this story. Mm -hmm. Essentially. He hated David Jensen because David made messes on the floor. And then this guy, Creech, had to come by and clean them up because he was the janitor. Right. So there is a fight between them. They're already not on good terms. So the way the story goes, according to some other inmates, is that Creech set David Jensen up to fight him, basically that he actually gave him a weapon and told him that he could use it if he needed to. And then pissed him off to the point that he tried to use it on him. Yeah. And it was a sock full of batteries. Oof. So David Jensen tries to attack Creech with a uh, sock full of batteries. Now know that David Jensen had cognitive disabilities. He had movement and motor disabilities yeah. and he had a speech disability. Yeah. He was not up to fighting anybody. No. no. So Creech, of course, disarms him quickly and hits him with the batteries, sock full of batteries, and knocks him down. So David goes back to his cell, or so the story goes, and comes back with a toothbrush with a razor taped to it or tied to it or something and tries to attack him that way. So that's all Creech needs. And he starts swinging a sock with the batteries. He hits David in the head with it, 
and shatters the plastic plate in his head, in his brain. You know, well, that's guarding his brain. Mm -hmm. Knocks him to the ground and then continues to kick him about the head and face until he kills him. Yeah. Um, it was apparently an extremely gory scene. Apparently what he did to his body was really, really gory and upsetting. And, you know, he surprised to say claiming that it's self-defense. But basically right. the courts are like, of this kid? Mm -hmm. Of this kid. Yeah. Okay. You know, no one believes that story. No. You know, and the courts are like, we're not having it. Mm -hmm. So eventually he actually does, uh, he admits to it. He says he kills him, but that it was self-defense again. But right. nobody's really buying that. Yeah. Um, the prosecution says he went well above and beyond self-defense. Right. I mean, okay, knock him down, but that's all you got, dude. Yeah. You don't get to beat him to death. God. Yeah. So he does eventually actually plead guilty. And he is, again, sentenced to die. Yeah. Because now Idaho has kind of gotten their, you know, story straight on who we are going to uh, sentence to death and who we aren't. So, right. you know, for those first deaths, that... Also, Execution now we've moved to electric chair, haven't we? We've moved out yes. of hanging to electric mm -hmm. chair. Now we've moved to electric chair. Yep. And so he's given the death penalty then in 1983. So from that time to now, he has continued to battle in court against the death penalty uh, for, you know, various reasons. Uh, and in fact, one of them is love. Oh, yes. Let's see. We shall show you. This is mm -hmm. just gross. This is gross. If they had given us the name of this woman. Right. What are you her doing? Out right, now. right. So he says, uh, if it was just me, I'd say, kill me today. This is what he's uh, saying during sentencing. He says, but I have my wife and stepson back there and I love them. I'm trying hard not to cry. Are you joshing on me, right. Thomas? Are you even kidding me? Yeah. He's married to a woman he's never even seen. They got mm -hmm. married over the phone. With a stepson. Yes. With God, a stepson. that poor kid. Ugh. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. But the court said, no, we, uh, we've had enough of your bullshit. So he was sentenced to die. But I am here to tell you that it is now 2021 and this fool lives on. Well, because he he was supposed to die in 1999. Yeah. And there was a stay and an appeal. And then it was supposed to be rescheduled. His his execution was supposed to be rescheduled. And it hasn't been for 20 years. Yep. I mean, come on, Idaho. Don't you have Google Calendar? I mean, what the hell is going on here? Right. How hard is this? Come on now. I mean, we managed to... Uh... You know, doing some of our other serial killers between then and now. Right. I preach? mean, Ted Bundy got, uh, you know, got uh, executed pretty quick, really. Well, yeah. And Paul Ezra Rhodes in 2011. Right. So why not Creech? I don't know. Yep. What is it about him? What? But what is it about him in general that, okay, yeah. so they trusted him to be a janitor, even though he was a mass murderer. They should have executed him 20 years ago, and now they're not. And there is nothing out there about why they haven't. Not a nothing. thing. Nothing public. Nope. It's so weird. It is this case is so weird. He also is, you know, many times, it seems, in his life, been able to convince women to trust him and fall for him. Not that that seems to be hard, unfortunately. You know, Unfortunately, how no, but serial killers that pick up women while they're in prison. Yeah, pick know. up wives. What? What? But there was Thomasina and Carol before that. And now this one, although um, there is no record that we can find of her name. Maybe it is Carol. I don't know. She was only either. 18 at the time. But I don't know. Yeah. She was a she was an accomplice, but I think. Mm -hmm. I don't think she was ever charged. Actually. I don't think she was. Well, and here's one other weird thing we found. Just oh, in, yeah. in the world of weird things. Mm -hmm. Apparently, this is his original booking photo. And it's for sale on an auction website in the UK. Or it's a press photo. It's an original press photo of him. Mm -hmm. And if you want it, what is it? It's going for 10 pounds. 
10 pounds and it can be yours. Yeah. This very 70s hairdo and dashing fellow. This uh, well, He at least had hair back then, I guess. Serial killer. Yeah. So weird. Like, you know, just searching for his name, trying to find anything because there's not a lot. There's not. But this is one of the things that we found. I just thought it was so strange. Mm -hmm. So weird. So that's the whole case. So honestly, this is one that we'll pick up as one of the ones we follow to mm -hmm. see if Idaho ever decides to execute. Right. And why haven't they? I they they're waiting, they've waited 20 years. I mean, it clearly they're not going to, but yeah. there's no official court filing or anything that says his sentence was commuted either. No, no. So he's still there. He has been in prison now for 45 years. Yeah. And I, I think he will be forever, no matter what. I mean, he has three, I'm going to assume now, two life sentences as well as the, uh, you know, this supposed death sentence. But, right. uh, you know, we don't think he'll ever see the light of day. By God, he shouldn't. You know, here's the thing. Just looking at his photo and kind of tapping into him a little bit. I think that he has the ability to kind of come across as a little bit disabled mm -hmm. and just kind of, you know, an easygoing kind of persona mm -hmm. that maybe is that gets swift. angry. Yeah. But there's actually this boiling psychopath underneath that. Mm -hmm. And he's learned how to manipulate with that yeah. because you look at that photo. And I mean, I know you can't say that anybody looks like a serial killer, but we've seen plenty of photos of serial killers that you look at them and go like, you yeah. know, like Israel Keys is one of them that you're like, holy shit, you know, this yeah. guy, I don't know. Yeah. I just think he's got a really good ability to manipulate. And I think it's because he can come across as being kind of mentally disabled. Maybe so. That's what I'm saying. Maybe so. I'll give you that. Yep. Yeah. So there you go. That is the story of Thomas Screech. We'll keep an eye on it. And we're definitely going to dig deeper into David's case and see if we can do a story on him. Yeah. Uh, I would really like to understand more about this kid's life. Obviously, he had a really rough start. And understand why in the world he was in a state penitentiary around the likes of Thomas Screech. Right. What a huge mistake. Yeah. All righty. Well, this is case two of the week. We'll be back tomorrow, Wednesday, with our MMIW case for the week. We'll be back tomorrow night for live case updates at 7 p.m. Mountain. We'll be back Thursday night for the Psychic Hour, also at 7 p.m. Mountain. That, too, is a live stream. Yeah. Watch for some pop-ups this week. We have some new... Uh, uh, a new show over on Patreon too. So if you're a patron, mm -hmm. keep an eye out for that. And we have some new Patreon content coming really soon as well. Yes, we, we have do. been busy little bees over here. Mm -hmm. And I believe uh, we have Valo Court here in the next day or two as well. So I think we do. I don't know if yeah. it's going to be anything, but just yeah, we're going into a private room. We'll be back to say court's over now. I yeah, we're not sure. So we'll we let you know. know. But also three times this month we have Mast Court. So that's right. This okay. Is in the death of Jessica Mast. Uh, her well, and we have a few things to talk about tomorrow week. night in our update case too about mm -hmm. about the the Dave Bell Bell case. Yeah, there's there's quite a bit rolling. So we'll yeah. keep you updated. We're keeping an eye on everything, every case we pick up that uh, you know is ongoing. Then we have to put out another peg, and you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're trying to juggle it all. I promise, we and we want to bring the best to you guys, and and also do our cases justice. So. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to learn more about us, head over to truecrimeparanormalpodcast.com. Suggest a case, join our Patreon, buy some merch, come join us on Facebook, whatever you want. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So thanks so much for being here. This is True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Psychic Sisters.